So in this clip we're going to put the DD and AA schedules together in one diagram which means that we can look at the goods market goods market equilibrium together with the asset market equilibrium uh, in one diagram so uh, recall that we have the exchange rate on this axis and output on this axis and the curve that describes goods market equilibrium meaning that any point on this curve is consistent with goods market equilibrium is this upward sloping relationship which we call DD it is <coughs> it is upward sloping because we get through the net export channel an increase in output with a higher exchange rate so uh, causality can be said to run in this direction a higher exchange rate causes output to increase second the asset market equilibrium uh, is the curve that describes uh, equilibrium in the domestic financial market, the money and bond markets, and the foreign exchange market. So that at any point along this curve, at any point along, along this AA curve, the money markets domestically and the foreign exchange market are in equilibrium. And we get this negative relationship between E and Y because higher output implies a higher exchange rate so causality can be said to run this way uh, the channel here is uh, through the uh, through domestic financial markets so uh, the higher income the higher is money demand the higher is the interest rate which taken the foreign interest rate the world interest rate and the expected exchange rate level as given implies uh, a more depreciated exchange rate so then we get a negative relationship there let's take this arrow out again now that all taken together of course means that we have here an equilibrium where uh, both goods and financial market are in equilibrium so just to make that perfectly clear at this point the asset market is in equilibrium but the goods market is not whereas at this point the goods market is in equilibrium but the asset market is not so here we have E star and here we have Y star so that only at this point where the two curves intersect are all markets in, equil in equilibrium meaning domestic money market the domestic uh, domestic bond market the foreign exchange market and the goods market Okay, what I then want to focus on uh, here, let's go to a new page. What I want to focus on just for a moment is uh, policy. So we'll first consider monetary policy, monetary policy, and then we'll look at fiscal policy. How in this model does policy affect equilibrium levels of output and the exchange rate? Let's take this as our starting uh, configuration so that here we have our equilibrium for level of the exchange rate and end output. Now, suppose that uh, the monetary authorities are increasing the money supply. So that is uh, the monetary policy that is being put into effect. Uh, recall that that is equivalent in this diagram which describes the money market domestically which is equivalent to a rightward shift in the uh, real money supply relationship so that we get a fall in the interest rate a fall in the interest rate and with the fall in the interest rate 
a fall in the exchange rate. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, fall in the value of the currency and a depreciation of the exchange rate. So let's make as well that clear. If we turn around the diagram for the real money supply, we get this relationship. like this and here we have our exchange rate now if the money supply is increased shift goes down here the interest rate moves towards the left and the exchange rate increases so there you have the exchange rate depreciation due to the monetary the monetary policy how does that translate to this diagram it is equivalent to an upward shift of the AA curve. So this is AA1 and AA2, which just means that we say for any given level of output, a more expansionary monetary policy implies a more depreciated exchange rate. This upward shift with an unchanged DD curve means that the equilibrium in the uh, in both markets let me clean this up just a little bit here take this out means that we get to a new equilibrium at a more depreciated exchange rate and a higher level of output so expansionary monetary policy leads to a fall in the interest rate a rise in the exchange rate which is equivalent to a depreciation higher net exports which increases output there you got your monetary policy story Second, fiscal policy. Fiscal policy. What's happening here? E, Y, and D, D, and A, A in the initial configuration. Now suppose that uh, we have an expansion in government expenditures so that G rises we could say as well that taxes fall but let's just they're not entirely equivalent but that would be a, a similar change in policy so an increase in expenditures or a decrease in uh, taxes uh, would have what effect uh, yeah. let's go back to the other diagram we can then here derive D and Y income expenditure model with the 45 degree line we have an aggregate demand curve which is D G1 and then we have an increase to D2 G2 and that means that we get down here with E and Y we get Y1 and Y2 and the exchange rate hasn't changed, right? So that this is equivalent to a rightward shift of the DD curve. Let me highlight it like this. So that the increase in expenditures implies a rightward shift of DD and with an unchanged AA relationship we see that fiscal policy, so expansionary fiscal policy leads to an increase in output with an appreciation of the exchange rate. Now what is going on there? The increase in income that comes with the increase in expenditures uh, as it multiplies throughout the economy leads to an increase in the money demand without accommodation from the central bank that implies a rise in the uh, interest rate which uh, given unchanged world conditions and expectations implies a fall in the exchange rate to satisfy interest arbitrage conditions and that means that the current exchange rate appreciates. So you see the difference in these two policies. Monetary policy leads to uh, output expansion with depreciation or output expansion through depreciation whereas fiscal policy uh, leads to domestic output expansion with the corollary of exchange rate appreciation.
let's very quickly finish with um, a consideration, consideration of how to restore full employment, FE I'll call it here. How do we restore full employment? Well, suppose that uh, we are in a recession. So that here is full employment output. So that's the level of output that would be uh, consistent with full employment in the labor market. And that that these two curves describe uh, this ideal e equilibrium. And then we have a negative demand shock uh, so that DD shift shifts towards the left uh, say that world demand decreases for home country output and we have this fall in output, rise in unemployment and with that a depreciation of the exchange rate. There are now two options to restore full employment uh, perfectly analogous to the discussion we've just had about monetary policy and fiscal policy. Let's begin with fiscal, fiscal policy. Simply, the fiscal expansion, G, the rise in G, would shift DD right back and get us back to the initial equilibrium. So that relative to the changed exchange rate, we'd have an appreciation. Fiscal policy would increase domestic demand with the corollary of an appreciated exchange rate. Mm. Okay, so here, didn't want to delete this. Let's go back, let's uh, erase that, and now talk about monetary expansion. So MS increase, how would that lead to re uh, restoration of the full employment equilibrium, it would be then at this point. So the upward shift in AA would restore full employment at a further depreciated exchange rate. So monetary policy would uh, restore full employment uh, at a through increase in net exports and that would require further depreciation of the exchange rate. 